Adriana, next slide. Okay. So we've done a variety of tests of using speech recognition wearing this suit to see what's feasible and what is not. Um, we looked at things like electronic mail, um, queries for databases. If an astronaut might want to look up, you know, what is this rock? What are its properties? What, what might it be? Those kinds of things. Um, command and control of some equipment. And you've been watching me control a presentation uh, by voice. You can do simple web browsing fairly easily. Um, you can do recreation, entertainment, and media playback, things like that. So there's a number of things that work. Um, and so um, these are these are things which um, there's no catastrophic consequences if the speech recognition fails. And that's what we focused on because current speech recognition is not perfect and it doesn't match what a human can do. So we want to look at using it for functions that an astronaut would do where if it doesn't recognize what he said correctly, it won't kill him. Mm -hmm. Petrana, next slide. Okay. So what, what are our conclusions of our preliminary tests that we've done at the Northern California Mars Society? Well, first of all, as I said, life support and mission critical operations are, are not a good idea. Not with the current state of the art technology and speech recognition. Um, the biggest problem is, is limited accuracy of speech recognition. It doesn't always get what you say correctly. And it's not as good as a human that you're talking to. Um, for certain applications, ease of use is a bigger problem. Um, we're used to talking to people who have a lot of intelligence, so we can tell them something like, get me directions to go to San Francisco, and they can do it very easily, but computer programs don't have that intelligence, even if they can recognize the words that you say. So to wrap up, there are similar issues in other destinations in space, the moon, on the International Space Station, uh, space shuttle, any kind of space thing, people are also trapped in spacesuits. Um, and also, these issues exist here on Earth in certain special environments, like clean rooms, um, underwater, the Antarctic. Um, a bright spot is that by the time we go to Mars, which we figure will be about 2020, the speech recognition should be better. So it should actually work better than our tests. And um, maybe it will be just like talking to a human being. Hey, John, uh, thank you. That was a very good demonstration. Early on the show, you mentioned that they'd be building some more analog spacesuits. Could you tell us about when and where? Definitely. Um, yes, we are working on building some additional uh, Mars analog spacesuits like the one that I was wearing. Um, we have a workshop slash meeting coming up on Saturday, July 23rd. It's going to be at 1 p.m. at one of our members' houses in San Jose. As I mentioned, we have a Yahoo group, and you can go there and find out the exact directions and get in touch with us if you're interested. Um, we're working on building a few more suits, and we're also working on upgrading them and adding more technical capabilities like speech recognition and other stuff so they can really represent uh, the state of the art in technology. All right, thank you, Jeff. Well, Lucinda, you're going to talk more about the upcoming conference in Colorado? Yes, I want to tell you yeah. first about the first annual open house we're having at the Mars Desert Research Station, which is the HAB in Hanksville, Utah, where we actually do the crew rotations and wear the simulated spacesuits. Um, that's going to happen August 6th and 7th. That's open to the public. We're having refreshments and a barbecue, and you can completely tour the HAB. You can wear a spacesuit. You can try mm -hmm. it on for yourself. You could try human factors, things like that. So it's our first annual thing. And then the weekend after that is our conference starting August 11th through the 14th. And actually, the subject of this year's conference is building a better spacesuit. So this conference, uh, and it's all member, It's a mem we have great speakers. We're having, uh, we're having uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Diamandis from XPRIZE. Uh, we're having an administrator of, of exploration from NASA being sent from Michael Griffin's um, uh, people. And then uh, we're having an astronaut there. And I don't remember if you know his, remember his name. Um, I do not remember I want to say that. Horowitz, and I think that's in fact mm -hmm. so. But if you go to marssociety.org, um, you can find out more information about uh, the conference. And what I wanted to say was that the conference is mainly member run. So members um, all over the world submit abstracts, submit all their research that they've been doing, possibly like John McGowan, who's doing his Petrona um, voice based, um, system. And so he's actually going to be doing a presentation. Uh, there too. We, we hope to demonstrate this yet again. All right. <laughs> at, at our conference uh -huh. in Boulder. 
So, and that's what it is. It's about members coming to our annual conference and bringing all the research that they, they've done over the year and, and bring it to share it with everybody so that we can continue. To, and that's what we do is take action and build things. And we're mostly comprised of scientists and engineers who love to build, who love to be, who are visionary and love to continue to improve what we're doing for, I guess, sending humans to Mars. Right. Also the conference you mentioned, one of the pieces from the X Prize is going to be there. Yes. Are there going to be any, any summer type X prizes for spilling space suits, space, other things for NASA? <laughs> well, that's a, definitely a good question to ask him, and and perhaps I'll do that at the conference. There'll be definitely a question and answer once we have speakers, and I'll ask that. That's a great idea. All right, now, how much does the conference cost? And... Uh, that's a good question. If you go to marssociety.org, you can click on the Conference 2005 link, and that'll take you to a um, a uh, form where you find out for how much it is if you want to become a member, how much it is if you're not a member, or a student. We have student rates, and I'm not sure we might have senior rates as well. Oh, okay. And also, in talking about going to Mars, you figure out how the way to get how, way to get to Mars and how much it would cost and so on. You want to talk about that? <laughs> yeah. um, well, the Mars Society was founded on the basis of a plan known as Mars Direct that was developed by Dr. Robert Zubrin, uh, which I don't have time to go into all the details, but it's intended to be relatively inexpensive uh, so that um, according to this plan it might be possible to send a series of missions to Mars for approximately 30 billion dollars spread out over several years. And it's worth noting that NASA's annual budget is about 13 or 14 billion dollars. So this is something that actually could perhaps be actually be done within NASA's budget just by redirecting some of the efforts as a follow-on to the space station and the space shuttle and so forth. So it wouldn't necessarily require a huge growth in the NASA budget. Um, it would just be a future step to build on the, the existing uh, successes of NASA. There's a centennial prize from NASA, which is specifically for extracting oxygen from the lunar soil. It's one of the problems that you have in going to any of these places is oxygen for people to breathe. Uh, so it's not exactly spacesuits, but it is. It's a, I think it's a hundred thousand dollar prize for whoever can come up with some little box that can suck oxygen out of the Martian or in the lunar soil. And you could do something fairly similar on Mars because the, the soil on Mars is a lot of iron oxide, so there is actually a lot of oxygen in the Martian soil. So that's an example of a prize that is actually out there now, uh, which is not exactly spacesuits, but it's closely related to spacesuits. It's human. Uh, how you get so people can live effectively on. Uh, Mars or the moon or any any anybody in space yeah. basically. The one that I heard about was uh, the next X Prize was to um, build a ship that can actually go from Earth and around the moon and back. And the first person who can do that, just like Spaceship One, who goes to low Earth orbit and back, will get this one. Yeah.